Hi, I'm Shada Monfit. I'm a marriage celebrant and I received a very unusual request to perform a ghost wedding. I'm very aware of ghost wedding, weddings over in Asia, but when Michelle told me she wanted to marry an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, I wanted to make sure that she was somebody of sound mind and healthy body. And so I interviewed her. I didn't want to be contributing to anybody's neuroses. And I also ended up speaking to people that she knew, her family, her friends, and they were, had given me permission to share recordings of uh, their experiences with Michelle as she was growing up. They saw things, they felt things. This wasn't something that Michelle just went through by herself, but from her early childhood, she has been having these experiences and unexplainable things uh, happening around her that she has always attributed to this spirit of Tutankhamun. Her deep desire right, and her love when I spoke to her overwhelmed me. Right? And I felt very privileged to be able to perform this ceremony for her. It's really not such a leap to think that an ancient Egyptian might find herself reincarnated into an indigenous culture within Australia. There is a very obvious but unacknowledged connection between the indigenous culture of ancient Egypt and the indigenous culture of Australia. The main one being that Egyptians needed vast quantities of eucalyptus oil for their mummification process. Additionally, Australian Indigenous have legends of trading gold with the Egyptians, Chinese and the Vikings. Ida Craddock wrote an amazing book called Heavenly Bridegrooms. Ida Craddock was a remarkable woman herself. She was one of the pioneers of the feminist movement in the 1850s. And she got the laws changed in England to make it illegal to beat your wife. She also used to do couples counselling and when she was challenged about how a spinster would be able to counsel a married couple, she ended up confessing publicly that she wasn't a spinster at all, at all that she had been married for many years to an angel, to a heavenly bridegroom. And she wrote a beautiful academic work regarding, well she actually wrote three beautiful academic works on this. Ida Craddock's works were remarkable for their time. They're still remarkable today. What she wrote about enlightens us about love between the realms of spirit and matter. Uh, it has existed since the beginning of time in every belief system on this planet. Additionally, and more importantly, they help us to define the meaning and purpose of love in our relationships with each other in our daily lives. In that book, she outlines and documents cases of spirit marriages in modern history, all the way back through to biblical times, right? including, of course, Mary herself, who was overshadowed by God to give birth to Jesus. Um, the mother of Merlin claimed to have a spirit marriage. Um, but we have these in every culture. Right? They go all the way back through history. And it's very interesting anthropologically that it continues on today, that this has not stopped. It's just become less spoken about. So here is a record, right, a spontaneous record of a spirit wedding. We weren't intending to create a video from this. I was simply a marriage celebrant, asked to be a marriage celebrant by Michelle for the day. I'm very happy to be able to share this with you today so that maybe it touches a place inside you and maybe it makes it okay for you to come forward and talk about your own experiences with spirit as bravely as michelle has A ghost marriage or a spirit marriage is a wedding in which one or both parties are deceased. They've been practiced for thousands of years in many cultures. 
We have records of ghost marriages in China dating back 3,000 years. In many aspects, they are just like a typical wedding. There is a nervous bride and a patient groom who in this case has waited for thousands of years to be reunited with his first teen love. Michelle and spoke to people who knew her and it became very obvious that something strange has been happening around Michelle for a very very long time since she was a little girl. Other people have witnessed this and in fact what impressed me most about this was that Michelle was very skeptical about what was happening to her herself. She, she tried to find other people to confirm what was happening to her. Uh, even without telling them what was going on. Right? And we've been able to gather some of those interviews today via Skype and Zoom with these people to show you that this is not just a fantasy that Michelle is having. This is not just a whim that she's engaging in. This is something that has deeply affected her life for a long time. And this really is a deep wish, will and desire for her to be married and reunited with this person. Now the whole idea of ghost weddings and ghost spirits may be unusual to you. Other women in modern times marrying spirits. I mean, if you know any nuns, you know that they are married to God, right? And they believe that they are literally brides of Christ. So we have a long history going all the way back, even to the record of the Nephilim who were conceived by women who married angels. Michelle Curtin's family are very straightforward, simple people from rural Queensland, from Chinchilla. They speak in a very simple and straightforward fashion about the experiences that Michelle has had. I've had the spirit of Tutankhamun with me since I was a little girl. I've always had the ability to see, sense and hear spirits since I can remember. When I was around 11 or 12, as soon as I seen King Tutankhamun, I had an instant draw and spontaneous connection to him and I was so madly in love with him within that moment. But the weird part is I knew absolutely nothing about him. We didn't learn about him. At school, we learned about the Great Pyramid of Khufu of the Fourth Dynasty. As I got older, I'd feel the presence of Tutankhamun with me in the same room. I'd see him out of the corner of my eye in all his phronic clothing from his head to his toes. As soon as I turned around, he'd disappear. I'd have visitation dreams about him, and these dreams felt so real, so vivid, like they weren't even dreams at all. And he'd tell me things in these dreams that I couldn't even possibly know. He told me how much he was in love with me. He warned me about things before they actually happened, which they actually did happen. And since all that was going on, I went to the library to learn about him because I never learned about him. And everything that I came across, I was in total shock because everything he told me was true. It's like, how could I possibly know that? I knew nothing of him. I'm Michelle's mother. And Michelle's had the gift for a long time. Dreamt about King Tut, knew things she could possibly not know of. She'd see signs from him. And my mother had the same gift. I could not make sense of any of it, so I went out and seeked confirmation from mediums. And every single one of them kept telling me that I was Anka Sanamu and reincarnated. And I didn't believe that. So, you know... 
I ended up seeing another medium without actually telling her anything about King Tut. The moment that she opened the door, she said, did you know you're an ancient Egyptian queen in your past life? And that just shocked me. But I had met Michelle about a year ago online on Facebook. A friend of hers actually came to me and found me on my business page through Awakening Cleopatra. And he happened to find me, I guess, with her having her love for King Tut. He chose me thinking that I'd be able to help her. And he made it sound like it was a negative thing, that she was being afflicted by some negative spirits or negative beings and was very worried about her. So I decided to go ahead and talk to her and set up an energetic clearing just to be sure. I know she was having her doubts about this being King Tut's actual spirit or not. Come to find out in doing the clearing, I saw a past life of hers that her spirit within happened to show me where she was queen, King Tut's queen, in a past life and was able to tell her some of the things that had happened in that past life. And at first she didn't believe it because I know she thought, okay, we have one life to live, we're here, then we die. And that's it, we cross over. But come to find out, we all see that past life. I know I'm not the only psychic to really tell her this. So it's just confirmation as to why his spirit sticks around her in love to protect her and to guide her in this life as she learns her lessons. I do feel that this is happening, that we do experience past lives. Our spirit within us is eternal and lives on forever. And we have that choice as to whether we incarnate here and stay here or whether we stay in the spirit world, heaven, whatever you would like to call it. But I know that Michelle, we've become friends and she has shared some of her experiences over the past year with me, some pictures of when she feels his spirit around or words in the clouds like love, things along those lines that you can actually see in some of her pictures. And um, I know that she's been having these experiences for a long, long time. And I know sometimes when you stray from the norm, you have a tendency to think you're crazy. I know we've all been there. I've been there as a psychic too. Um, but she's really not. She's a kind, loving human being. And I'm happy to have met her. I'm very blessed and honored to be able to be a part of this journey with her. And it's shown me some truth and given me confirmation in life as well. To that point, and I still question maybe that's possible because I'm very skeptical of the belief of reincarnation, but I can't explain the visions that I do have. Hey guys, I'm Nicole Curtin. I'm Michelle's younger sister. I was going to talk to you today about what I actually seen when I was a child growing up with Michelle with the her tune color experience because I actually seen it firsthand from the beginning. But this tune karma thing was it was very different thing and it was very special and very intense what i was saying it was just crazy all the different things you'd experience in a day like he was trying to get her attention and draw her in the signs and the visions and the dreams and it would just get stronger and stronger and stronger to the point that now they're married and even today he still sends signs but you look back now and you realize to yourself all that stuff you went through was actually worth it to get to where you are today I have seen it firsthand what she went through and how he sent her signs, showed his love and just try to get her attention. Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming here today to celebrate this special day with Michelle according to her deeply held beliefs. It is a spirit wedding, so first we must begin by asking spirit to create a sacred space for us. So in Egyptian fashion, we will call the corners. Beloved Lady of the South, in the region of rest, the region of wakefulness, the region of reincarnation, come in peace. You have protected the great company of the 42 natural laws. Hail and welcome. Imminent. 
Yuan the World, the little company of natural laws. Masters of the West, we welcome you. Hail and welcome. Beloved Lady of the North, in the region of Met, the region of fulfillment and immortality, may you shine happily on the horizon of eternity for all of those here. Hail and welcome. Hail, Abut, region of the purification and fire, great company of the natural laws of the East, masters of the netherworld and the spirit, open our gates for us today and control your water as you watch over us while we perform our sacred rites here today. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. Let us begin with the oldest prayer known to mankind, the Egyptian prayer of the heart. This prayer was placed over the heart of every mummy. It welcomes people from the spirit to be with us here today. Heart of my mother, heart of my mother, heart of my being, oppose me not in my evidence. Thrust me not aside before the judges. Fall not away from me before the guardian of balance. Thou art my car in my body, Kemu making sounds in my members. Come forth to the place of happiness, whither we would go. Make not my name to stink with the assessors of those who make judgment over men during my existence. Make good a bearing with joy of heart, weighing the words and deeds of my life, utter no falsehoods concerning me in the presence of the great gods. lay side by side in the womb of our great mother, holding each other. We moved, enclosed in the star-filled waters, caressing fingertip to fingertip, nuzzling nose to nose, brushing lips against lips. We were made for each other, I the leader and the active one. Held him firmly as we emerged from starlight into earth dawn. I watched my other half as he turned radiant, slowly illuminating the heaven and the earth with spreading all-encompassing light. Though he grew tall and majestic and lit up the cosmos with his brightness, I knew the soft vulnerability that filled my brother's soul. And then after a moment of distraction, he was gone. O oh, Nile, O oh, Nile, where have you taken my love? O oh, Nile, bring back my master, bring him back to me. But my love did not appear, nor can I hear his voice. In my chamber, I tore off my glorious robes, my jewels and my adornments. I smeared the antimony from my eyes. I wiped away the redness from my lips. Naked, high-headed, I left the place in search of my love. So I became the weeping woman, traveling through eternity to the extremes of the land, looking for signs of my lost lover. Do you remember, daughter, not the great mother, Mrs. You remember when he left you before to come to me and lay open his heart to you. He left you then too, and you came. To learn it was not a leaving. He always returned, always with the fuller heart than the one that set him on his path. You and he, you are one soul. You can never be parted, yet you weep and wail and roam the world aimlessly demanding his return. But where is my love? Why does he not respond? Does he think I'm angry with him? Look at me, I am your beloved sister, your only one. Do not leave me, I mourn in my heart. I search with my eyes, good king, won't you let me see you while I can see? I call you, weeping to the limits of the skies. Let me see you, son of Egypt. 
my heart cries out a spell. Let me see you again. And then suddenly, in full glory, stands my soul, my love, from before time. Oh, how I weep to see his sweet face. I take a few faltering steps towards you, then I hold back and I stop and close my eyes. Look at me, I command. Tell me what you see in my eyes. I clenched my eyelids tight. I knew my eyes were a mirror that would confirm your longing. Suddenly, I was shy as I'd never been before. Open your eyes. Why are you angry with me? You left me. You floated out of sight away from me without saying goodbye. You abandoned me without a word of explanation. Abandoned you? I have never abandoned you. Shh, I whisper. Listen to me, my love. Listen to me. I went to resolve the quarrel once and for all. I could never abandon you. Weren't we created together? I could no longer be separated from you by the rules of others. That was why I went. I wanted to settle that you are mine as I am yours, together and apart. Together I murmur, always together. I cannot be separated from you. I don't have your strength. He holds out his arms. I run towards him. I hesitate again, close to him. Can I touch you? I ask. Touch me. My breath is hot on her cheek. Touch me, my love. I am here beside you. I fall against my beloved's breast. I cannot lose you again. If only you knew that I am always with you. Surely you feel me. Even if you can't see me, I can feel you. My love, my essence is with you always as yours remains with me. Then Osiris sings is it a song of wisdom. My sister has come. My heart exalts. My arms spread out to embrace her. O oh, night, be mine forever. Now that the queen has come, I enter the water and brave the waves. My heart is strong in the deep. The crocodile does not frighten me. The flood is as land to my feet. It is her love that gives me strength. It makes a water spell for me. I gaze at my heart's desire as she stands facing me. Believe that I am yours everywhere at all times. If only you could know it. Of separation is missed. Nothing, Nothing before, before the sun. Wow, written 3,000 years ago and today very pertinent with the water spell. <laughs> the Nile is flooding behind us. So let us begin. When I began meditation, his energy would get so much more intensely and I'd have more visions. I'd see him as what he actually looked like when he was alive. I'd have visions like flashing, flashing, flashing in my mind. His energy got so intense and there was this strong and warm, beautiful, loving energy coming from him. And there was a lot of sexual energy as well. And it would get so strong that I'd break out of the meditation because I didn't know how to deal with that intensity of energy. So before we begin this ritual, I must state that I am authorised under Australian law, but also by spirit, to be a marriage celebrant. Before I join you today in the presence of these witnesses, seen and unseen, I am to remind you of the solemn and binding nature of love and the relationship that you are about to enter into. Marriage is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life and sometimes for life after. Is there any amongst the witnesses present, seen or unseen, who knows a just cause why this couple should not be again joined in this lifetime? Speak now or forever be silent. Then let us proceed. I believe, Michelle, that you have vows that you'd like to say in the presence of Tuck that's here today. Pharaoh Tulankhonu, son of Ra, Nebkapuru Ray, Lord of the Crowns, King of the South and North, Upper and Lower Egypt, my love and my king, in you I have found true love and my ultimate soulmate. I was never the person to believe in fate or destiny, but now I see that it is real and everything happens for a reason. You once said to me that you love me and soon you'll take me away. Standing here today, I know now you meant what you said and we are truly meant to be. Since I was young, I felt that instant loving connection to you right from the start. 
I know without uncertainty that I did and I do always choose you. You have been such a large part of my life and in my dreams. You have been there for me and guided me through my life journey. In turn, I am grateful. You have loved me unconditionally even when I wasn't so lovable. The way you love me is unlike anything I have ever known. No words can define the love and passion between us. Even though you are non-physical, you have manifested in my life in so many ways to prove you are there and very real, and to always show how much you truly love me. It's such a privilege to have the gift to feel your touch, to hear your voice, to feel your presence and loving energy around me, to see you from time to time in all your chronic, um, ancient chronic clothing. I cherish every moment. My spiritual gift that was given to me since childbirth was the best thing that ever happened to me because it brought me to you. You have always been truthful and caring and I am so grateful that you have chosen me to be your wife from this moment forward to the rest of eternity in the afterlife. In front of the gods of Egypt and my family and friends, I commit my life and spirit to you as your wife. I promise to love and to cherish you. I promise to be loyal and to work on my insecurities. Good and common, you are the love of my life. I am completely devoted to you in this life and through to the afterlife. For true everlasting love, I give this ring to you with all my heart and soul. I will be with you forever in eternal glory. You can feel it. I got the wedding photos that day when it went down and you can feel his presence. You could honestly feel just looking at the photo. But you could just feel it straight away that there was love and you could feel that his presence was there at the wedding. It was, it was like united. And since she's been married, she's just been so much happier and just herself. Like Tudan Kamun has been very consistent and he tells me the truth. Everything he says always turns out very true. He's done apparitions in my photos where he has literally appeared. There's spirit orbs or Egyptian ghostly eyes appear on my wall. I've had out-of-body experiences where I'd stand up at in the bedroom and my body was actually still lying on the bed and I thought I was dead. I'm like, oh, my God, am I dead? And I realized that, no, it's not, and found out about astral projection. And these are the types of dreams that I have with sexual encounters with King Tut, they're astral, and I'll have visitation dreams with sexual encounters with King Tut. But he also does it while I'm awake, and it's more energetic. But And his touch is like a light brush against the skin, and it leaves it like a tingle feeling. It's very hard to explain. The energy that he has is so hard to explain. His love is so beautiful. It's like so warm, and it's very romantic, and it's... Amazing. For all of you who don't know me, my name is Tamara. I'm a very good friend of Michelle Curtin's. I have seen all the evidence for myself about the spirit of Tutankhamun who has been around Michelle since early in her childhood. 
I have even seen it for myself that Tutankhamun is always around her. I call upon all the gods of Egypt to bless and consecrate these two rings. As we are all joined together today in the sacred space of a circle, may these rings ever be a reminder of this sacred space and time. May these rings also remind you to always be respectful of your promises that you make before the gods within the sacred space of a circle. Never promise what you are not sure you can deliver and never underestimate the power of your magical word as today you will exchange vows to stay together as long as love shall last, which we are seeing today means eternity. Mm. So mode it be, if you agree, say so mode it be. Everybody, so mode it be. So mode it be. Good. As you put that on there, just go I and your full legal name. Do in front of these witnesses. Seen and unseen. Seen and unseen. Except you, the great king of Upper and Well in Hell. The great king of Upper and um, as my lawfully wedded husband. As my lawfully wedded husband. My eternal partner and mate. My eternal partner and mate. As long as love shall last, which is eternal. As long as love shall last, which is eternal. This is my wish, my will, and my desire. This is my wish, my will, and my desire. Everybody agrees. Say, so mode it be. So, so mode it be. be. Oh, wow. I'm getting the hang of it now. I, too, Alright. You, in front of these witnesses, see and unseen, except you, um, Michelle Curtin, as my lawfully wedded wife and my eternal partner and mate, as long as <clears throat> love shall last, which is eternal. This is my wish, my will, and my desire. So may it be. Everybody say, so may it be. So may it be. Mm -hmm. I do hereby call upon all the witnesses present, seen and unseen, to do all in their power to aid and in not in any way hinder Michelle and Tutankhamun in this sacred marriage, as long as love shall last, which is eternal. If there are any present that see ap apathy or fear enter into this arrangement, which is love's nemesis, I hate by charge you to do all in your power to help heal this sacred love, which is eternal. If you agree to do this, everybody present, say, so mode it be. So, so mode it be. be. So today is a rebinding as well. So what we are going to do is bind them with the cords in spirit. Before all these witnesses present, seen and unseen, I bind you together. I tie the knot of attraction that binds the planets in their orbits and the cords of love that bind the seasons in their cycle and you to each other for eternity, for as long as love shall last, which is eternal. If you agree with this, say, so may it be. So may it be. Today, what the gods have reunited and tied together may it never be untied. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to ask you to just take a minute to bless Michelle and this union in spirit and to just call on whatever is holy and sacred to you to come in and consecrate this union.
I'll read out something that Great King particularly wanted for Michelle because she is his half all of his morning star. I keep saying you're his morning star. Have you said that to you before? No, just call me Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Sure he's queen. Uh, give praise to Hathor, who lives in Thebes. Kiss the earth for reverence to her in all forms. It was on the day that I saw her beauty that I beheld the lady of the two lands in a dream. She placed joy in my heart. He who is wise will honour her at the seasonal fe festivals in order to solve the problems of rivalry and jealousy and coveting the wonders of Hathor, which she did in ancient times, should be related to the ones who do not know her and the ones who do know her. A generation after generation should tell the next generation how beautiful she truly is. Give praise to Hathor who lives in Thebes. She is the great queen. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to sign um, an Egyptian wedding certificate and then we'll make a proper promotion. of the east, masters of the netherworld. The column is laid down, the circle is open. Hail and farewell to beloved lady of the north in the region of Net, the region of fulfillment and immortality. The column is laid down, the circle is open. May you shine happily on the horizon of eternity. Hail and farewell to the region of Mnet, the underworld, the little company of natural laws, masters of the west. The column is laid down, the circle is open. Hail and farewell, beloved lady of the south in the region of rest, the region of wakefulness and the region of reincarnation, so important for us today. Go in peace, you who are protected by the great company of the, of the 42 natural laws. Hail and farewell. All right, so one thing I did discuss with Michelle is if we've got a cigarette lighter there. Yes, we do. Because you can't move very well in that dress, can you? No. So we're just going to light a little bit of a flame here for sake of fire of love. That one's too wet. <laughs> so what we would like you to do. Oh, 
Jump over it. Would you like to jump over it? Grab the hand of somebody you love and have a little jump over the bike. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any which way you like. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Guys, Just hold your dress up. Yeah, hold your dress up. Hold your dress up really high. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to catch it. Good girl. One, two, three, go. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to go? Sasha? Nice <laughs> Sasha's going to have a go. Oh, that's cool. Oh, there yeah, we go. Nice and high. Good job. 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 Good <laughs> Wet, nice and green. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I can do that. Leah, Okay. Go for it, Leah. Oh Leah, the best wedding assistant in the world. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much to everybody. I know this is a very different kind of wedding, but in some parts of the world, it's quite common. So. Yeah, I feel so privileged to be able to do this for you today. And like I luckily love I, I nearly burst into tears when I was bringing you through. It was so emotional. It was just pushing so much emotion into it. Yeah, I'll send you that book. Well, I haven't arrived yet when it comes to being Alright, well everybody, thank you so much and congratulations to Michelle and who you bring.